Hey garden friends, thanks for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come visit mine. We are in what I call a planting window. So we've got some cooler temperatures, uh, slightly overcast skies, you know, sun's coming and going, but rain on the way. And believe me, I've got plenty of stuff to plant. But before we get to that, the fun part, harvesting, you know, lilacs are supposed to be deer resistant, but they keep eating it. I'm gonna to have to either spray it or move it into the vegetable garden with all the other flowers. Follow me, let's pick some peas. Well, it paid off starting these peas on St. Patrick's Day like Grandma told me I'm supposed to. And these are the peas we looked at uh, just the other day, Shiraz Purple Snow. And you gotta get them off the plant. Uh, I don't know if this will be it for the plant, if it'll put on another flush. It depends on if, how hot it gets, but a beautiful pea, tasty, and it will be for, for uh, stir fry. Look at this one though. Just look what it's supposed to look like and what that one looked like. Still be tasty. Always like to harvest in the morning. That's when the plants have the most moisture from sitting here overnight. Here's another one of those peas that didn't turn purple. That's cool. And like I said, I'm not sure. These look tired. You know, they've put on a ton of peas. I've already had one harvest off this already. So that might be it. And then if that's the case, we will plant something else here, but I'm gonna give them a few more days, see if they put some more flowers on. This is a really long lasting pea. The, you know, peas don't like warm weather, but last year these went longer than any other of my peas in the garden. We also have some snap peas to pick too, those patio pride. All right, let me get to the other side here. I already made a salad out of uh, the first harvest of these and I'm really letting these go because I want the nice size peas. Mm. Sweet, mm, really sweet. Well, for our planting window, I'm gonna try an experiment. Um, these are some actual dandelion greens, Italico Rosso and some arugula and they prefer cool weather. I've got tomatoes back here. These are gonna be eight foot tall eventually and hopefully provide shade for these cool weather crops. Uh, I just threw some compost down here. The soil wasn't bad at all. You know, I've been growing stuff in here for 20 years and keep amending it with compost. But even that, I want these plants to have what they need with the compost. And, you know, I got some peppers I gotta find a place for too. But let's worry about these and get them in the ground. They've been sitting in these pots since spring, so let's hope this all goes according to plan. I'm just gonna throw some of these in, split them up. I mean, if you can't grow dandelions, you're in trouble, might as well quit. Well, this compost seems nice. I only have about 400. <laughs> You gotta thin, Doug, you gotta thin it out. I love these dandelion greens though. They're kind of an Italian thing. I'm Italian by marriage and uh, I'll tell you, they just have a unique flavor that can't be beat. Good for you too, believe it or not. Dandelions are one of the most nutritious plants on the planet. Fell in love with arugula. We went to Italy for our 25th anniversary, never really knew much about it, and now I'm growing like <laughs> a bunch of different varieties. All right, what do you think's next? Water. Put some water on these, and we'll see how they do. I have a whole series of videos on my YouTube channel called You Should Grow This, and I'm adding this to the list. This is a hardy banana tree. And last year, we actually took uh, one of the babies off and gave it to a friend. But look at it this year. We've got the, the main plant, a baby, a baby over here. There's two little babies here. This thing is going to get 20 feet tall. Now, no bananas, but it has a unique tropical look. And I thought it was going to be gone. You know, we had this uh, really cold spell in December. And all I've got, I just cut it to the ground. I put straw on top of it. And I was so happily 
surprised to see it popping up here and through the summer we'll show you how big it gets it's just a huge behemoth of a of plant and perfect for this spot out here i love it so being again the cheapest gardener in the world i will not buy <laughs> Uh, pre-made hanging baskets until it's the very end of the season and then I will reuse the hanging basket. This size is a little small for me and that's why I'm going to use it for shade plants. Uh, otherwise if this was out in the sun you'd be watering it uh, gosh every other day. And I just bought three flats of stuff. I actually got this uh, coleus cheap because it's been really cool and uh, it, the coleus just doesn't like it when it's cool and i love coleus and begonias and i love my impatience it's funny about the impatience you know some gardeners will turn their nose up at some of these plants uh, just because everyone grows them but boy I, I don't think i could have my shade garden without impatience and we have dealt with uh, impatient downy mildew over the last few years but recently like last season season before it wasn't bad and it's, it's a disease that's been around for a long time but I'm just planting my impatience as I normally would. If it does hit, it's usually at the end of the season. And I'm just making some hodgepodge uh, hanging baskets here, and then we'll fertilize them and put our hangers on. Um, I just thought these uh, impatience were really good looking, really tall. I like them when they're in these three packs like that. And boy, the roots are like nuts in there. And so I don't even know how I'm gonna put them in here. I guess I'll put a couple impatients in the middle because I think they're going to be the tallest. Although oftentimes I use those as the spiller. Not using the conventional uh, formula that we normally use. The thriller, spiller, and thriller? Filler and spiller <laughs> that we did a couple weeks ago. I'm just, like I said, I'm making kind of a hodgepodge here and once they get going, boy, it's going to look awesome. All right. I think uh, maybe a couple coleus. Yeah, and these coleus are struggling a little bit, but they'll be fine. I think someone actually overwatered them, but then they got a little too cool, cool. And I was just looking for colors that I thought went together. You tell me. Could it actually look bad, any colors mixed together? I don't know. I just love flowers. And like I said, these are gonna be hanging in the shade. I haven't always been the biggest fan of begonias, but. They are, uh, in this case it doesn't matter, but they are deer resistant. They'll usually come after them at the end of the season. But again, all these plants, kind of thinking there's always right plant for the right place. This is all shade lovers. And like I said, once they get going, I think it's gonna be nice. One more begonia, please. Okay, again, these are, man, those are nice looking plants. Where's it gonna go though? Stick it in the corner. All right, I'm gonna do this other one up too. And I think the same exact way, so they'll match. What about you, do you like impatience? I grow lots of impatience. When you're in the shade and you're looking for an annual, the only thing about them, the deer will eat them to the ground. And my deer problem has been bad. I was out in the garden earlier today and one was snorting out there, it has its summer coat on now, which is pretty, but pretty annoying. <laughs> these look a little better. It'll be fun to see what these look like at the end of the season. And I have a place where I have to hang them because where I used to hang them every time we come out of the house. <laughs> Especially when you just hang them, you bang your head on them. Okay, actually I'm gonna fertilize first. Our dramatic, D-R-A-M-M, -M, dramatic from DRAM. Again, they don't pay me to tell you about it. This is my favorite fertilizer. It's so funny, I uh, told another gardening friend about it and I saw her yesterday and she just says, that stuff stinks. <laughs> this doesn't smell half as bad as the old stuff we used to use, the old fish emulsion. I love this stuff. Uh, Every time in the summer, with especially a container this size, I'm going to be fertilizing every time I water. And we showed that last week where you water first and then 
add some fertilizer. This planting mix that's in here, uh, half of it, maybe a little bit more, was from last year, and then I didn't replace the whole thing. I just put, I don't know, like I said, half of it or maybe another third of, of good new planting mix in there, and it seems to do the trick. Save my clips. Come on and off pretty easy. Okay, where's uh, number four here? Ha, there it is. Okay, let's hang them up. Oh my gosh, one at a time. All right. As I said, out of harm's way when you come walking out. All right, I'm gonna get the other one up. And I have lots of other places in the shade garden for those plants. Probably mostly in containers. I think it works. So we have an infestation problem on this rose. One is not serious, the other one is devastating. And so for some reason this has been a big year for aphids. And aphids are just little sucking insects and if you look close you can see they're all up on the stem here uh, sucking the life out of this plant. But the other insect, uh, spotted lanternfly, and we've talked about it before. These are the nymphs. And so they change the way they look, called instars or stages. And so at dogoaster.com, I've got uh, an illustration showing how each one looks so that you know what it is. And if you see them, you got to kill them. This is going to get worse before it gets better. I'm using an organic control called horticultural oil, but you can use insecticidal soap, diatomaceous earth, neem oil would work uh, as organic controls. And the tricky thing about the spotted lanternfly is it's a, a leaf hopper. And so as soon as you start spraying, you'll get some on there, but they'll, they'll jump right away. And I'm gonna, just basically what this horticultural oil is doing is coating them. It's the same thing for the aphids. We're just coating them with this oil. It's gonna suffocate them. But this is gonna be an ongoing process. This is gonna be for the aphids uh, once a week for at least three weeks. And whenever I see these awful looking spotted lanternfly, I'm gonna be spraying. And I sprayed out here a couple days ago. All right, I don't see any more, but I'm gonna keep looking. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined by Rob Krulljack. He's an assistant district manager at the North Pittsburgh office for the Davy Tree Expert Company. And when you mentioned the de de declining spiral of trees, I thought of me as a declining spiral. And well, wait I'm a minute, that. I'm down on, I, I got here. You. Okay. So when you say that, what, what are you referencing there? Well, that, um, you know, emerald ash borer will kill our ash trees. Dutch elm disease will kill our elm trees. But most trees die because of compounding factors, and that's what we refer to as the decline spiral. So, like, take this year, for instance, you know, trees thought it was spring way back in, yeah. what, January, yeah. right? Warm temperatures, this and that, and then they dropped. We got the polar vortex type situation, killed buds on the trees, and now, like, the trees aren't leafing out. We're still going to give them time. We're not giving up on them yet. But those sorts of things will compound and compound, and now we're in a drought for the past three weeks. It, it leads to that's what's going to kill your tree. You know, I've been hearing a lot about that vortex and what it's done to different plants. Uh, good soil, though, means healthy trees, right? Right. So set, set your tree up or your plant up for success. You know, if, it, if it's in, intolerant to salt, don't plant it next to your driveway. You have salted every year. Um, if it's, uh, you know, would prefer a dry, you know, well-drained soil, don't plant it where you have a spring coming out of the hillside. That's, that's the sort of things that compound and we couldn't kill a tree in the future. Well, we're going to do a deep dive on fertilization in an upcoming show, mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about how important it is for people to fertilize their trees. Yeah, you know, fertiliz letting us fertilize your trees will return the nutrients back into the soil that was stripped away, like maybe when your, your house was put in, a brand new house. You're lucky you live in like a forest environment. So like the leaf litter and the humus is already here and the trees are absorbing those nutrients out of the soil. Yeah, I'm lucky to live in a forest with the big giant oak trees falling on everything. Yeah. As always, thanks for your time. I'd shake your hand, Anytime. but I got a cold, buddy. Yep. Thanks for coming. Anytime. For more information about everything we talked about today and to see that illustration uh, that shows the spotted lanternflies, different instars or stages, go to dougoster.com and please like, comment, and subscribe. Love to hear from you. Until next week, keep planting, and we'll see you then.